Hello and welcome back to episode 12 of Heroic Stats and Any Heroics podcast. My name's Stephen. I'm current GBHL ranking officer and, of course, uh, leader of Any Heroics, the most talked about team in the GBHL, technically. Byron. Um, I am, as <clears throat> always, joined by Dave Farmer. Uh, yep. He's he's the one who actually gives the podcast some form of competitive legitimacy. Um, the intern is uh, away on holiday this uh, this week. I've actually given him a week off. Um, he's been working so hard lately that I thought, you know, uh, yeah, you haven't seen your family in 10 years. Okay, I'll unchain you from the basement. Um, so in, instead, we have the wonderful, the delightful Jasmine Tetley, queen of many things and uh, world champion. Uh, Jasmine, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Hello, um, my name's Jasmine, and I've been playing the game for too long to remember. Uh, longer than Elliot has been alive, which is a, a scary thought. Um, but yeah, so played in the GBHL since maybe 2018, because I took a break around uni. Um, but yeah, and then just do anything and everything. So yeah, at the moment, like I got back into it because of the team's aspect, because um, I'd already kind of like done more than i expected to in the game before then um but yeah and then yeah just obviously like some of the obscure things i do like you know conquers middle earth same thing really no difference right now, now when doesn't... you say conquers i think it's important to clarify that you are reigning uh women's world champion uh and you've had it three times is that correct yes so i'm the reigning grand champion and i'm the only player to have won three grand finals which is yeah. men's v women's yeah um, as well so yeah yeah uh, also i should point out that jasmine has uh finished second in the gbhl as well which is sort of glazed past that <laughs> at speed but in uh 2020 2021 um jasmine finished second so was that because no i finished one year above you one position above you and it was two say. positions above me i finished fourth that year just barely <laughs> Came down to the finale, which I'm used to, by the way. It's happened twice. Um, rest in peace. Literally the final game of the final finale. It's been 2021 as well. If I'd won that game, I would have finished third in the league. Or possibly even second in the league ahead of you, Jasmine. If you'd have won and J. Clare had finished second, I would have finished fourth. Yeah, but if Jay I... Claire finished second and you finished third, so then I yeah. finished second. And well, I wasn't even at the event. <laughs> yeah, well, Jay, Jay and I were playing each other in the final game, so there was no way for both of those things to happen. If I was winning the tournament, if I'd beaten him, I would have won the tournament and he wouldn't have finished second, Rowan would have done. So before anyway, we go too far down this rabbit hole <laughs> um, of, oh, this happened 12 years ago, um, <laughs> let's just get quickly uh, onto the, the, the first and uh, most important segment, hobbying Stephen, what have you been up to hobby wise um actually uh since we last talked nothing um i've got a big weekend planned for easter um gonna take a bunch of models across country and hopefully uh, get all of my thrandy wheels halls knocked out in three days by um, yourself presumably uh, no with monica <laughs> of course um, yes because she's very enthusiastic although i have to introduce her to contrast paints so we'll see how that goes down. oh i mean I feel like that's the best way of getting the whole thing done, surely. Yeah, I think so. Well, my hobby time this weekend was a tournament. We'll be talking about in the in a little bit. I haven't done any hobby since last week, though. Uh, not nothing other than uh, I submitted my list for the of Steel, um, which is a tournament in a couple of weeks with some unique rules. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I didn't really do any hobby work. Jasmine, you've got any uh, cool or new projects on the go? So I painted one model this year, which was quite cool because it was a, a different spider. Um, And then I've not really done anything recently, but I do have a, a full proxy army for Black Riders. Um, I'm not going to say what the proxies are, but that's going to be quite a long term project. So that's what I've got to do. OK, I was about to say, I hope that's not for City of Steel because... I don't it, wouldn't, play it wouldn't do Steel. well. Uh, someone, Black Riders at City of Steel. Someone um, has taken Black Riders to City of Steel, by the way. In case I think we a... noted the scenarios. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. It's I, the don't see it, I don't see it doing well, but also, you know. You forgo yeah. that you forgo the king's colours, so. Yeah, yeah. but you that lose... doesn't actually lose you anything. It just means your opponent always scores the bonus TP. It also means your army's less efficient because you're not making the most of the rules back. Yeah. Also, but then again, arguably, 
but it'll be eight wraiths will be quite good at capturing king's colors so you know tomato yeah. tomato true. True. i don't think it's a good uh, the right choice uh, um, i think finley says you got to play the rules back because that's the whole point but for those unaware uh, jasmine has a disney princess army uh i believe is that right of proxies yeah so it's corsairs um which are evil disney princesses yeah that's it's quite cool um but moving on we are of course here at heroic stats sponsored by if my powerpoint will clip across by uh -huh. uh, i say it's sponsored we are affiliated with firestorm games uh get all your hobby supplies there there is a qr code uh there'll be a link in the description as well um big shout out to them as previously stated we uh we love firestorm games and uh we're very proud to be affiliated with them mm -hmm. um good, good, good venues good, lovely gaming venues. card gaming data yeah. tabletop gaming all anything the good stuff. related yeah. um but on to the events of the weekend uh, a tournament which we were all at, One Ring to Rule the Bubbles, which was a GBH 100. Mm -hmm. um, it was hosted by Matt King uh, of Dragon SPG Events. Uh, missed the closed brackets there. I'll have to fire myself. Uh, it was 700 points, uh, six games over two days. Uh, it was entirely random scenarios, so you could have repeated pulls, um, except round three was always going to be modified hold ground. Now, what yeah. was special about this version of Hold Ground is that you, for each turn that you had the most models in the center around the objective as though you would normally for Hold Ground, you got one well, one marker. And then at the end of the game, you tallied up who had the most, and then you score it as though you would for Hold Ground, but with number of turns instead of number of models at the end of the game. So an impetus on getting to the center quickly, uh, as well as also being able to hold the position um how do we all find that change because I, I thought it was quite interesting um it just meant that i double marched to the center and then sat in the middle trying to push my opponent out if i'm honest I, would... I don't understand the motivation behind it really i would make I... one big change if this is what you want to do i'd still make the last turn count for triple yeah because I... if somebody had one fast moving model that was like a bat and you're suddenly in the middle, and then the other person mm. can't contest. If you rack up three turns, it's almost impossible to come well, back from. Let me, yeah. let me let me explain what happened in my game. So I came on second, so great, good start. My opponent had to spend a couple of might, brought his whole army on together. It was Serpent Horde. Um, came on together. Um, I brought on my whole army on the other side of the board. I had the Spider Queen, and I popped a Broodling, and I got in there turn one. He couldn't shoot me. I got eight points, and he didn't get any, because I got a Broodling there on the first turn. So rubbish. <laughs> I don't understand why they changed this. <laughs> frankly, it was a nice. I mean... It's it's nice to see uh, attempts at making rules packs different. Um... Yeah, I, I agree. I just I don't understand. I, for one thing, I don't really get why it was round three, and I don't really get why it was changed at all. I should ask Matt because I could totally do that. But yeah. um, I just frankly, I think making the Spider Queen stronger is hilarious. I'm sure he will you defend himself no in the comments because he yeah, is an avid he, listener. He does listen. So yeah. explain so, yourself, um, Matt. I gotta uh, know. Most sporting was Rob Howard. Um, and best painted was Chris Soper, who we will get onto in just a moment. Uh most drowned models, uh, you'll understand the significance of that in a moment, was Adam Searens. Um, and let's just quickly go to a specific part of the rules pack. Water features. Now it was uh in Bath. Obviously, haha, bath water. Um, importantly, every piece of the terrain that was water on the board would be deep water. Look up your deep water rules before the tournament, or at least everyone should yeah. have done. Um, and there will be at least one piece of water terrain on each board. Mm -hmm. Now, there were some boards that were totally dominated by water, I would say. Yeah. Um, and there were some boards where it was a river down the side. And then there were well, some boards where it was one or two lakes. There was, yeah, some boards where there was basically like one medium-sized lake in one corner. And yeah. then there was one, I think there was like table four, which I had the, I played on one of the games. It had a river that was a couple of inches wide across the entire board with one bridge. And I remember thinking like, wow, I'm glad I'm playing this in a scenario where I have such a huge advantage. I played it on when I played the modified whole ground with the sprudling because that could have really screwed me if I'd had to actually cross that. If I'd been forced to cross it for one reason or another, 
with an mm. entire heavy armor army it's you know it's you could easily have lost like 10 models just trying to cross the river and i know that's the point but um i think the the skew of how much water was on every board was essentially what i was worried about going into this event and i was fortunate not to get uh, screwed over by it so i mean it was it was declared but you know the rules pack was vague it did say it could be any amount of water but it didn't say you know, there was no like promise on fairness or averageness. Mm. So you kind of had to take, there was a lot of like, maybe this will be good. Maybe it'll be horrible in the rules pack because realistically we didn't know what the boards were going to look like beforehand. Yeah, I think it, I thought the water terrain was actually quite interesting. It affected almost none of my games because there was almost never an onus on me to come to my opponent because I always play blinding light elves and therefore I have the board control advantage usually, uh, scenario dependent. Um, we will come on to uh, some interesting uses of the water rules later on. Um, but for now, there was another part of the rules pack which said you're allowed to bring your own bit of water terrain as long as it fit within a six by six by six box. That's six inches, not six centimeters. Um, so just a few examples of some nice water terrain pieces. Uh, a lot of people actually took this to the a kind of artistic level um you know we had some we had some very pretty ones there's golem on a rock uh there's a little oasis there's a waterfall um there were a few more cynical ones uh myself included who uh i just did a big bit of woodland terrain because obviously i was playing elves and put With a, a puddle, in tunnel, puddle in the middle as the water feature um because yeah. the rules pack permitted it um and one person i played against did say i don't hate you for doing this <laughs> i hate the rules pack for allowing it <laughs> yeah hey it was an uh, infinitely deep puddle <laughs> it was an infinitely deep puddle um and nothing drowned in it because i'll be honest most of the time we forgot <laughs> yeah um but it was nice to be able to bring your own bit of terrain um mm, i did not use that bit of woodland in at least two maybe three of my games which was quite Nice. Yeah, it's a similar rule to something that Ali King, younger brother of Matt King, yeah, does at his event, um, City of Kings. Um, they have us bring along a terrain piece rule. Um, yeah. and people have been gamey. People quite often just like to have something they can put on the board that benefits them. Um, you know, or just so they can break up line of sight corridors or what have you. Yeah, I think it's a nice idea. I think it. The size constraint basically means you're never going to be... This is, there's a size constraint and then there's a placement constraint where you can't put it too close to other terrain. So you're never going to break the game with it. But you um, can you can kind of bring yeah. things in your uh, advantage. So for example, oh, yeah, Contest yeah. of Champions, I won the roll-off to place the piece of terrain and I was playing against Elliot Harry with Sullivan. Hmm. Um I placed my bit of woodland terrain in the middle of the board. So Sullivan mounted had to start in the woodland terrain wouldn't be able to charge anything turn one and yeah. it also it, it basically won me the game because i was using galadriel and therefore gave me the time and positioning to mm. basically use magic and other models to, to to win the game so i think without that rule i i might not have won that game uh, um, that's gone back. i yeah. will say from my games if you were both bringing like a nearly full-on six inch water piece feature it did actually really clog up the board in a mm. in a way that yeah. was game changing. Um, mm. For whatever yeah, I, reason, well, I think I, mean... I played next to you two or three times um, and narrowly avoiding you. I would refer to it as, um, and and I was looking over, thinking, "Hmm, that is a lot of water on that board mm. there." Well, deep water is deadly. Like, yeah, standard armies. Anything with heavy armor and shield has a fifty fifty chance to die every time it moves, starts its turn, or moves in watery terrain. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's deadly. So having a lot of deep water on the boards was it was game changing. Um, but that's the thing; it's it's two guaranteed rolls. If you go in, that's one roll, get... and then to come back out again, that's another yeah. roll. So but it's no a minimum was, of two rolls. No one was going into large areas of deep water willingly, though, were they? Realistically, not willingly. Which... They were trying to kill their models. Teaser. We will yes. get to later. Um, but first, uh, we do have the best painted now. Yeah. Um. We, I will show you the, the best painted army as well. I did just want to give a quick shout out to Chris Robson, who uh, did some really cool objective markers for this event. Um, oh, where yeah, he I had uh, Peter Jackson's filming equipment. So he has yeah. a green screen, a camera, etc. And Peter Jackson on a chair. 
and I just thought they were so cool. I just I'd had to you shout had to them shout out. out. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I was. I they were really cool. Those. I enjoyed them. I basically anything, got them. But... Anything that imaginative is just yeah. the reason why you play the game. He, he came mm. best, uh, third best in painted. Uh, he came third in best painted. Um, and he had. I was chatting to him afterwards, and he was like, "Yeah, I definitely got it because of the objectives, not because of the army." And I was like, "He was using army of the dead." I don't yeah. know about that. I those were nice looking army of the dead, honestly. Um, like genuinely like they were painted brown like not they weren't painted traditionally ghostly which is for me i think a superior way to paint them um and i think i it wasn't like flashy but it was really nice all the models are like you, you take a second you think like oh it's something the dead painted kind of dark and then you look closer and you're like oh that's nice that's actually a really nice paint job uh, i particularly yeah. loved his aragorn and legolas as well they looked amazing and the king i think was a converted king of the dead uh had a uh you know, some directional lighting and a flaming green sword, which is pretty cool. So... I'm not entirely sure. More importantly, though, the person who actually won Best Painted... <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> ...is Chris Soper with his last March yes. of the Ents army with Merry and Pippin on top. Uh, I love it when Ent players make every model unique. I think that's... Cause, because there's essentially three kits that you can actively buy nowadays. Mm -hmm. Um the fact that he's actually, you know, given given the other model. Well, I think it's a converted tree beard. It's the one on the the back middle. I at, I at couldn't tell you. It could be a third party. I mean, that uh, the back right is a um, it's that's an old a, metal one, an old metal yeah. end, yeah, which is very heavily inspired by the sort of uh, old Warhammer Fantasy Sixth Edition Wood Elf Tree, tree man. man. Yeah, I love um, that end model. I love it so much more than the new one. Not their heroes, just the new generic kit. Yeah, I was going to say, the yeah. new generic end is of an era where big plastic kits were quite uh, new, and they, they have an unfortunate tendency to all look the same. Uh, the, the Mordor Troll is in a similar boat. It, the, the, the plastic one is a nice model, but it's not very... Like, when you've seen one, you've seen yeah. all of them. Even though it's very customizable, it sort of isn't, in a way. Yeah, because it's essentially... What is that? Nine pieces of... Yeah. Of things that you can pose with the two leg joints, two arm joints, and then the main body. Yeah. Um, although this is a really beautiful silver birch. Oh yeah, no, he's done yeah. a great job painting it. I really um, like the uh, the quick beam model that came out as well. That guy looks great. Yeah. Big fan of that. Um, uh, but then Forge World. It's so. also nice to see that um, the bludgeoning as well. The Dragon Emperor. Yes. Clearly, uh, clearly, that's he, what it's inspired with. Yeah, I. I'm not entirely sure if it's a result of an F of the FAQ. I would have thought not because that was a month ago, and I, I mean, is that a, had an easter egg to his hand? I, I did. I did oh. speak to uh, him very briefly, and he said that uh, he did actually. Uh, I think he bludgeoned the Witch King. I think mm. uh, so. That's quite a good fun. target for the bludgeon. To be fair, yeah. I uh, yeah, I like that he's got the shield in his other hand as well. It's a nice touch. Yeah. Just in case he needs to use the shielding rule, right? Exactly. Um, but uh, away from Chris Soper's lovely, lovely models. I do onto... believe he also got Wooden Spoon as well. He did, yes. I might be wrong about that, but I think he did. He did, yeah. Chris Soper won. Never let it be said that Ents are a competitive army. Yes. They're not. Hey, listen, they can't be transfixed. It's... No, that is actually quite hard to deal with if you're playing a list like Black Riders or Vanquishers. Ents are just like, hello. We can't be stopped by your stupid magic, idiot. And they just throw stones and laugh. Yeah. If you're a TO looking for someone to match up uh, Black Riders into, make sure you choose the, the Ents. <laughs> Give them the Ents. Yeah. Give did them they, a volley. Did they have a rule about deep water? Because no. I don't, don't think they do, even though in the films they literally cause a flood and stand in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know. Uh, but just yeah. if they, but then if they, they can't if be the edge compelled of their base into deep goes, water, so. goes into the puddle on my wooden terrain. Yeah. On a one, they die. On a one, they die. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to the winning or podiuming lists. Yeah. Uh, third place, uh, our uh, current GBHL. Uh, I'm not going to say president because he's not president, but prime minister, uh, Mr. Dewey Evans. Um, Coordinator, his... tyrant, well, despot. Yeah, same you know, thing. whatever you want to call it. Uh, the the one who uh basically kicked out Ali King and told him he couldn't be in charge anymore. Um, bringing his serpent horde list. Um. Now that is shocking. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you see Dewey Evans at a tournament, you expect one of two things: it's either Great Beasts or Serpent Horde. 
and in or some both. cases it's both yeah um he has in his army which has 48 models and 23 bows Sulla down the serpent lord on horse five rattle warrior with bow three with bow and spear five serpent guard one watcher of Karna with two blades two Arakan merchant guards one haradrim raider with war spear bow one serpent raider rider oh, serpent rider oh, you can only get yeah. so far into a it's a Harad thing. They, they, everything they have. At least is... you're not reading out the poison arrows anymore. Yeah. You've got the Betrayer on horse with a bunch of dudes, uh, one Abrakan merchant, another Watcher of Kana, uh, and then you've got Raza with a bunch of dudes, <laughs> one one Abrakan merchant so, guard and the Watcher of Kana. The key version of this is the Siladan on armored horse, Betrayer on horse, Raza, then he's got 20, he had 23 bows, Yeah, uh, um, lots of ser- uh, servant guard, a solid amount of Abrakan guard, yeah. And I think he had five cavalry total, including two raiders with bow and war spear. Yeah. Um, so yes, so the five cav- warrior cav and yeah. two hero and pl- cav. Obviously, yeah, so yeah. as well, but you don't really count them because, uh, yeah, this is 48 models total, 30, 23 bow shots. Nasty, nasty list, honestly. Yeah. Um, because deceptively brilliant in combat when the betrayer gives them full, but basically everything in this list has poison weapons. The only thing that yeah. doesn't have poison is the Watchers of Kana and the Merchant Guard, uh, who have extra attacks and or 200 weapons for free. Yeah. So a lot of re-rolling poison in there, including Suladan himself if he gets stuck in. Raza already re-rolls all of his wounds, but betrayer already re-rolls all of his wounds, not that he'll be seeing combat. He's got magic. It's got incredible shooting. It's got a six-inch banner. It's very good. Yeah, it's got march. It's got two strikers. It's... However, I, I am proud to say that he did say to me, grumbling, that he played four of his six games. He had faced anti-shooting of some variety. So the plan is working, people. Keep taking Blinding Light. Keep yeah. making horrible gunline lists like this cry. Because, <laughs> well, I mean, relatively, he did still come third. Um, <laughs> You know, cry... But yeah, I, I I hate playing against a list like this because it's just... In fact, we did play, and I was lucky this time um, because he put his Betrayer on, he shot me through my uh, my Shadow Lord, and he hit me moderate amounts of times and then just didn't wound the first two rounds of shooting, which meant I got to him unscathed, which is huge because if he randomly spiked dice and killed like five of my Black Numenorians, uh, it would have been a very hard game from there. But he didn't. And that's yeah. the thing I hate about shooting. You literally just have to cross your fingers and pray that they don't blow your dick off before you get into combat. So. Uh, I played him in game one, and he didn't blow my dick off before we got to combat, but then did blow my dick off in combat. So I yeah, had to get Dad, Dave, to come and play him. Uh, yeah. to beat I, played him, him I played him around five and I 12 nailed him because the game never ended. Lol. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a very solid list. Uh, yeah, it's, it shoots it's well, a really good list. Fights well, it's got good mobility. Uh, you're not worried about things like contest because Suladan yeah. with magic backup is still good. Um, yeah, I mean, he was playing contest on the table next to me, and he was playing into what I consider to be a very hard matchup for contest. That he was playing against Thranduil. Yeah, um, you know, he had fight five everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Legolas can shoot away your horse, shoot at your betrayer and stuff, and he still managed to win. Mm-hmm. So you know, well done to Dewey. That was a that was a tough tough game. Yeah. Um, because Siladan's only fight five, and you basically have to dismount him because your horse is not going to survive. Yes. So, yeah, well done to him for winning that. He, yeah, he did voluntarily dismount uh, to charge in. Yeah, you um, should though, because yeah, because you have yeah. to, because otherwise Legolas you're going to lose your horse it. otherwise anyway. And then you can't fight. Oh, actually, no, he didn't. No, 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 that's not quite true. You can uh, transfix I, Leggy though. So I think he rolled a five or a six and yeah. spent a point of might to, to to be able to fight. Right. Okay. Well, like that. I mean, that's fair. I, I, I would rather not do that though, because you're going to need your strikes to, mm. to just fight elves anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, like you can transfix Leggy, but Leggy can still do that from out of twelve of your battle line, and then what you're going to do? Yeah. Your betrayer can't really get into a dangerous position because if you lose him, you're losing a lot of your fighting power. And if Legolas has an elven cloak, he can do it from within six if he dismounts on his horse. Yeah. So, well, from yeah. outside of six, but within twelve. Yeah. Which is um, why you should always take an elven cloak on horse. If. Yes. If you have five points spare, I if wouldn't call it essential. Points. But yeah, if you can, uh, it's a good it's a good tool to have for sure. So yeah, really, really solid list. Uh, nice yeah. to see Dewey doing well again. I think this is yeah, maybe again. third or fourth time we've seen him podium this year. Yeah, this is his second third place at a GBHL 100. Yeah, so you have been he's... running those stats this afternoon, haven't you? I have you? been running those stats this afternoon. But I would have uh, been able to tell you that anyway. Now, in second place... The Queen Conqueror herself. Someone I've never heard of, probably. Jasmine PG Tips. 
For those of you who aren't aware, there's two brands of uh, tea in the anyway. UK. One is Tetley, one is PG Tea. Yeah, explain the joke. That makes it funnier, Stephen. Yeah. Um, Jasmine, run us through your list. Uh, so I took Angmar, um, and on the face of it, it still functions as normal Angmar would with your shade, your Witch King. But the key thing is, is that I have five Spectres, and the reason for that is, is that the FAQ made it very, very clear that you can send somebody into deep water, and then obviously they have to take the deep water test. That's so, using the fell light ability. Yeah. On so spectres. spectres have an amusing clarification that they say that you can't do something that would put you in danger, um, but the the specifically mean you can't jump off things, and then it is specifically allowed that you can walk them into water, which is funny because that is significantly more dangerous than any of the things it doesn't let you do. But it is themey because that's what happens in the movie. So, yeah, yes, we Jasmine and I played round one. Um, I think you drowned seven of my Moranans and Black Numenorians, um, which was a little tragic. Fortunately for me, it was recon and I had the Spider Queen, so I wasn't in danger of losing. But that would have been difficult to deal with if we'd been playing something else, probably. Uh, I think if you ask any of my other opponents, they would agree that it was very, very difficult to deal with. <laughs> Well, I mean, my poor Moranans are only courage two slash one, depending on where the Witch King is. So how I does did, this um, army army work, Jasmine? Uh, run us through what happened for you. So pretty much water terrain. I literally bought the biggest six by six square lake that you could um, mm -hmm. just to maximize everywhere where there's deep water. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, basically you just go, cool. You move into the water, go take a courage check. And it worked incredibly well. Um, I drowned two banners, a Gundabad captain, uh, the Morgul knight. Like, sure, it gets plus one for mounted, but it's still got a minus it's got three minus modify two. from that. Uh, banner minus heavy three if it has a banner. Right. Yeah, so it had the banner, so it was just a very, very quick and easy way to get rid of a banner. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you can double down, and if you see it's a hero, you can then compel them with the Witch King, mm -hmm. and if you really need to get them to drown, you can paralyze them as well. Although the saddest thing was that when I paralyzed an orc captain face down in the water, he recovered first time and then swam out. So he I had to exploded. black dart him the normal way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like I, 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 we haven't actually gone through what exactly is in this list, so I'll just quickly run that down. I noticed you've taken an armored horse on your Witch King. Is that uh, any particular reason, or did you just have spare points? I always just quite like the armored horse, to be honest. Mm, it protects okay. you against normal strength two bows. That's fair. Um, so, or... yeah. Bard's great bow. Uh, I mean, personally, I would almost always rather have the extra will point, but teach. So, just own. running through it quickly, we've got Witch yeah. King with Crown, Armored Horse, three additional might, five additional will, three additional fate, uh, an Angmar Orc with Shield, Spear, Banner, eight with Shield, uh, six with Spear. Sorry, that should be. Um, I've input that incorrectly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One Angmar Warrior, uh, Orc Warrior with Orc Bow and Spear, two with uh, Dead Marsh Spectres. An um, Angmar Orc Captain with Wog and Shield, three Angmar Orc Warriors with Shield, three Angmar Orc Warriors with Spear, three Angmar Wog Riders with Throwing Spears, one Dead Marsh Spectre, five Orcs with Shield, five with Spear, and two more Dead Marsh Spectres, and then a Barrow White. So you've, you've only got a total of five might, but the thing with Angmar is you don't really mind a, yeah. about not moving first. So yeah, it's a very yeah. reactive army similar to AOL. I guess in that way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. You the, prefer going second. The might might have been a big issue in hold ground if I'd have played a different army. Um, yes, which is I why was the, next which is why the one. Barrow Whites are one drop as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, just in terms of the Spectres, they one drowned a lot of models. Two were incredibly useful for charging terrifying enemies, and Three, then six. wounding. Wounding Sauron. I got a cheeky little drain courage on Sauron, so they wounded him on fives. They wounded Army the Dead <laughs> on fives. And to be honest, they drowned an average of over 70 models per game. And then that's on top of all the combat stuff they did over, as well. Over 70? Do you mean seven? 70 points. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, you yeah. I like, 70? How many models are you facing? I mean, I drowned so 32 what? models in the yeah. weekend. I was about to um, say, was there one game that brought the average up? You played Goblin Town or something? There's one game no. that brought the average down because it was Army of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, they can't drown. Yeah. Not allowed. But then, um, yeah. on, on top of that, 
the wild riders specifically don't have shields mm. so that they can capture the lakes because they could just stand in there and go yeah well i can't drown i heard that i was forgot to mention this but there's the same advantage that um wild riders and serpent cav and uh raiders can't drown mm. in water because they have a deep water because they have plus one for being mounted and they don't have heavy armor they don't have shields so you can i mean i had a i had a wild rider without a shield as well and that was i, I found that useful because you yeah. can't roll a one because it's plus and on a five plus you get to move full through the deep water which is actually really good i think that didn't happen very often but it did mean that you could use them to hold down one of your flanks quite effectively i found that anyway um if you were using a imagine jasmine did this a lot putting a uh if you can have a water feature anchor one side at the end of your line that's really useful because people can't outflank you essentially and they also if they get too close to it you can dead march well yeah them i mean that was the, the problem water. i was having <laughs> i uh the, the thing with dead march specters is you sort of think three inches because compel is three inches but six a full move it's a really long way and like yeah. six inches from every bit of, we didn't even play on a board with a lot of water on it and and yeah. we played a good scenario as well where you could well, yeah. split up across it <laughs> but yeah, yeah in, some, mean... in some games it was honestly brutal i felt like i was playing a different game at times but i was having a whale of a time and so much fun a whale of a time. Mm. What? Well, hey. Yeah, I. I mean, I was hearing lots of um, diabolical cackling from you. Yeah, well, that's when just you were... normal, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's normal Jasmine behaviour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was quite. It was quite funny watching the whole ground game. Um, I was stood next to that, and I was just like, "What is going on? What is going? What on? is going on here? What is going on?" Um, but first place, what is going on? We've got a... Oh, I've forgotten to put the name in here. Uh, but hang on a second. Uh, there we go. Huh, a Shadow Lord. Look at that. I've got it's, my eyes closed. Um, who came first, Dave? It was me. I came first. It was you. It was me. My 700-point army, where I decided... I looked at the rules pack, and I decided I didn't want to bother uh, worrying didn't about water. Didn't even bring water. your own water terrain piece. Nah. I just took the Shadow Lord on horse, eight trackers, a wild rider with throwing spear, Gorbag with shield, five black Numenorians, six Manans with spear and shield, one orc warrior with shield and banner, a ring wraith with two might and additional fate, that's seven will, so no additional will purchased, six black Numenorians, six Manans with spear and shield, and then the Spider Queen and a Bat Swarm allied in for a cool 700 points with the Shadow Lord as my leader, of course. So um, I was I was looking at this um this list obviously when i was building it on on tabletop admiral uh mm -hmm. sponsors um and i always have this question in my head whenever you build a list i'm like why do you put the shadow lord with only orc trackers and then mm -hmm. i remember it's because if he deploys poorly you can just move him away because he's on a bloody horse i'm an idiot um you can put so the reason is because uh Gullbag and the ring race. So I, this is like my, I have like a, a, a little bit, I'm a little bit neurotic about the, the scenario divide and conquer. It's my favorite scenario. And I always, always build my armies with that scenario specifically in mind, mm. because you can basically get extreme advantages just by planning your army properly. Did, did you have a hundred percent win rate in that scenario last year? Or very yeah, close I did, to? Yeah. yeah. No, it was a hundred percent. Um, Because it's just, if you take your marcher, you max their warband, you take your main fighting hero, you max their warband, and then you put them together on one side, and then you march all the way to the middle immediately, you have such a such a good chance of winning the game. Put your mm -hmm. banner in there as well, and then you put fast stuff in the other warband. So this also synergizes nicely because the Spider Queen's main weakness is shooting, so she gets to hang out with the Shadow Lord. You get your trackers over there and a Warg Rider who can... Uh, skirmish at the other side objectives if needs be and I'm talking about Divide and Conquer like we played it which we didn't but this is the logic you know this is why yeah. I choose this way the Ring Wraith has March Gorbag has the banner has the line with the Black Numenorians and everything Yeah. so that would be my vanguard as it were charge the middle and then the fast stuff the Shadow Lord on Horse the Spider Queen and Bat Swarm can get there on their own way and the trackers don't mind being on the edge to pick an objective. No, trackers would rather be on the edge. They'll yeah. sort of shimmy around, picking shots inaccurately all game, maybe picking off a few models and then running onto objectives towards the end. They're, yeah. they're, they're weak enough that no one can be bothered to go after them, but strong enough that you can still contest objectives with them at the end of the game. Yeah, if you, send it, 
if you send cavalry hero after them, you're spending a lot of points on 40 points of models that can scatter. Um, okay. yeah. Knowing that there was hold ground, were you not tempted to take the one for plus one, minus one? No, because Gurus Gurus doesn't have strike. Sure. Realistically, I'm not compromising on those. I want the, the second wraith. I always knew that. And yeah. I wasn't willing to compromise on Gorbag because once you, if you drop Gorbag for Gurits, you end up with um, no strikers of Spider Queen, which you can do. That that does work, but especially because like... you've got double caster. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that, I can do that, but like, I don't want to. I like sure. the, I like well, the the wraith. The wraith Gorbag covers is, the march. Gorbag's a nice line breaker. Um, mm. He's not Shagrat, obviously, but when he does get up to the fight five three attacks, it's quite cheeky. Extraordinarily um, efficient for sixty points. Oh yeah, go go back's great. I I yeah. totally agree. He's awesome, but it just because we knew that was hold ground. Yeah, no, well, I mean that did cross my mind. But for me, my logic genuinely was it's on day one. Yeah. Like, if it had been game six, I may have considered it. But because it was day one, I'm sort of of the mind that I could probably make it work anyway. As it happened, my my hold ground deployment wait it went as about as well as it could have done. Which is to say, my opponent had to spend two might, and I got to go second and didn't spend any, which is perfect. Yeah. You also, um, um, for those of you unaware, the Spider Queen uh, can move on the board, uh, her mm -hmm. full movement, then spawn uh, her um, broodling. <laughs> her broodlings, and then they can then Just move. One. So you get them, you get something in the uh, yeah. in the center in the first turn, which for this custom version of whole ground is completely broken. Yeah, completely broken. Did like, you consider like... that a reason for yes, taking I Spider did. Queen? Yeah. yeah, I was like, so long as I don't roll a one maybe a two i mean two isn't great but like on a on a, on a three i just spend a mite on a four you know on a, on a four plus you get you just win the game basically yeah dave has been sending me pictures of the spider queen for weeks being like she's so good in this scenario i love her and i was like well i mean in, i mean in in that modified version yeah it's like there's nothing that's gonna be able to compete so the spider queen is astonishingly good just in general, she's amazing, and like, you know, like for for the price, she's vulnerable. She has weaknesses, but with a bit of magic support, particularly the Shadow Lord, helps her from being too scared of shooting. With with that, you, you just oh, you're eating good with that with that model. Really, really, yeah. you are. It's she, she's one of the, she's she's one of the best models in the game. Um, easily, easily, if you, yeah. if you know if you know what you're doing, um, I think yeah. it's probably like the biggest glass cannon. Other it's just a shame Silibar. she's um she's red with Silidan, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean if she was if you have to pick between the two, they're both exceptional pieces in their own yeah, rights. Well, um, um providing different uh, things, obviously. My eight hundred point list with Shagra. If 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 I could if she was yellow with Silidan, I would throw Shagra out the window so fast and put yeah. the Spider Queen in instead. Like that's how good she is. Yeah. Um but let's move on to our next topic. Uh yeah, now well, last week. We did chat about uh, the greatest of all time in the GBHL. Mm -hmm. um, now, some of the comments uh, were noting that we were specifically talking about the UK. Um, and we thought recently uh, there has been an event in America, which we could have a chat about. And that was Adepticon 2024, Ooh. which did have a Middle Earth GT. Um, now, that was in Illinois, Chicago, uh, specifically. Um, pronounced Chicago. Yeah. Ch chicky go um it Love was it, uh, 85 players uh 750 point tournament with six games veto in pools so pools wouldn't be repeated um and each round was two hours 15 minutes um yeah. importantly and i like really like this little tweak is the first game was always paired thematically so wherever possible ministerius would play uh something assaulting minister it's so mordor etc and you'd play on that style of board where possible. You'd also be able to request to not play people you traveled with, which when it's the US, if you've traveled yeah, for, say. let's say, maybe you've flown with people or you've driven for 20 hours, that's a really nice tweak. So I, I really like that. I think that's uh, more common in the US because their scenes are so desperate, like they're spread yeah. out. That's yeah. understandable. It's just um, a little thing. No red alliances, uh, no Tom or Goldbury, uh, Tom Bombadil, obviously, and no Smaug, which uh, I'm a bit kind of like, I mean, what's Smaug doing at 750? Who cares? Yeah. Um, the, it was a, a major win, which was five or more margin of victory or a sudden death. Uh, you wipe your opponent off the board, was six tournament points, 
A uh, minor win was five. A draw was two tournament points. A minor loss, which is where you get your opponent only gets a minor win, was one tournament point. And a major loss was zero tournament points. Um, There's a minor note, but it always bugs me when draw isn't halfway between a minor win and a minor loss. I don't know why that is. Yes. It, like, why not just make it be three? Make I understand three. people want to incentivize <laughs> winning, but that's what the major win is for. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's a bug. That's an old school bug. I think mine. it's. I think it's like three one zero or three one zero is okay. I don't love that either, to be honest. I think five three one. Five three one feels yeah. feels right. Five three one with major minor, perfect for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. This would be perfect if the draw was three. Anyway, that's again yes. this personal. Um. One. But yeah, personal bug bears aside. Indeed. Um, it was nice also, to see um eighty five players in that tournament. Yeah, the um, eighty five players started this tournament. <laughs> well, yeah, there were there were quite there a few seventeen drops, drops, which um you know crazy fair enough. Uh, I think that's a fifth. Is that exactly a fifth? It is exactly a fifth of players. Dang. Um, but you know people drop out for various reasons. Yeah, I mean, especially when you've event. got a long way to go home. Yeah. Um, I can totally understand that. No so. shade. I just thought it was funny that yeah. there's so many drops. It's a culture thing, clearly. Like p- different, like out, like that would be kind of frowned upon in the GPBHL. child. But like if if yeah. you're in a place where there's no frowning at it, then why wouldn't you? If you weren't, if you were there to try and win and you lost two games, you're like, well, yeah, I'm we off. are obsessed with our manners here in the UK. Yeah. Um, to a fault, and... probably. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's the same the way thing we in are. Poland. After day yes. one, some people just didn't. Well, our entire team dropped, which is four players because they'd rather spend the Sunday playing. A very complicated board game and they knew that they weren't able to um win the tournament which was not frowned upon in the slightest it was just yeah yep fair enough that's the thing so fair um so let's have a look at the lists which podiumed and see if it. there's <clears throat> any difference in metas uh across meter. the pond meter uh, <laughs> i suppose they use uh feet the and inches right yeah it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's fat and omshes Oh, sorry. Trick. First of all, no, best painted. Um, yeah, let's do that first. Yes. Uh, now these. This was the um, golden demon entries. So the standard of painting oh. you were about <laughs> to see. Uh, so it's almost when Scott we White's say ass. go and look at it, <laughs> I mean go and look at it. Yeah. Because this a... is the best painting. Some of the best painting you will ever mm-hmm. see. Um, so third place, and we are doing all three entries because they're all phenomenal. Yeah, they're bangers. Is a Goblin Town captain, uh, the little guy, the little guy uh, on his little on his little perch. He's he, he needs some dentistry work. Clearly, he's a uh, a British stereotype. That's what they think. How dare you? What dentistry is like. Um, but this was Neil Hollis. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing his surname right. I um, thought so. That's the that, now that's the third place entry with yeah. that level of painting. So. All I'd say is he's clearly chosen to flex by picking a very small model and being like, I'm just gonna paint this tiny little guy, you know, better than you'll ever paint anything, you idiot. Yeah. I, I, I honestly feel. love this because so many obviously like the dioramas are great, but everybody paints them right. Nobody goes, you know what, I'm gonna paint a goblin captain. Yeah. Yeah. But Not do it in such captain. a good way. We, yeah, we were chatting about this, one. weren't we, Jasmine? I was like, I've seen this one guy paint a Minas Tirith warrior and it makes me never want to ever paint again. And I sent it to you and it's just like, it's just well, godly levels of... It was so, yeah, that, I don't know what you model. mean. Well, he, he, he even comments when he posts it, he says, oh, yes, this is painted with acrylic paints and a paintbrush. And everyone's like, <laughs> liar, <laughs> I don't believe you. Because it's that good. Yeah. Um, anyway. Moving on to the second place entry. It is oh. a insane non-metallic metal uh, Dragon Emperor on the rock. Uh, just just I like... I say, I think that might even be better than something that Louis van Heck could do with, with non-metallics. Yeah, and this is from uh, Camille uh, Kazira. Kazira. Again, apologies if I'm butchering your surname if you are listening. Um, but yeah, this is just... The, the blade is phenomenal. The the, yeah. the blade is phenomenal. I mean, I mean every blood single part of it. The rock, touch. the the blood dripping off the blade, the yeah. the gold filigree under the think, blood. I think my 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 strongest point, the thing that I think looks the best, is either the top of his helmet or his like plated shin guards. Both of those look phenomenal. Yeah, this is outrageously just, good. Just insanity. Like these are models which people have probably spent literally hundreds of hours on yeah i would have thought so um for for golden demon 
Uh, I also I also love this model as well. Like, and we don't yeah. get to see it enough because uh, it's the dismount model. Yeah. But yeah. I think this is a much better version of the Emperor because he's yes. actually fighting. I've seen it's people. Also, it's got an Eldar purpose. Spirit Stone style. Um, uh, what's the word? Cod piece. Uh, style yeah. on there as well. Well, I I've seen people just put this guy on top of the palanquin because they like it more like they yeah. just put him on the base and then put the base on the palanquin so they don't have to paint him twice and you just take him off yeah absolutely stunning work um now what could possibly trump those two i mean very nice i would suspect it's gonna be something very nice what it is oh. a randwill on elk dashing oh, across yeah. ice um you look at that now I'm just not qualified to talk about any of this. Where's the intern when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you and Monica's uh, speed painted Mirkwood elves are going to look as good as this, Stephen. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, expecting you to. Yeah. You got a whole weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have Thranduil on Elk, but uh, you know, I will be returning with. Um, I will not compare it to this. I like. Um, I like the breastplate work. Obviously, the base is phenomenal. The paint work on that ice to make it look see through is amazing. This is phenomenal. But the I like his chest plate very much. I think his armor is my favorite part of the Forge World for Randwell. I think it looks amazing. It is it um single source lighting from the circlet and also the blade, or is it just from the circlet? I can't really tell. Or is it, it looks, reflections it... from the ice? I. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be from the ice, but I think it's from the blade. Personally, because otherwise the elk's gonna have more reflection on it. I think. I don't know. It's tough, but it looks amazing. The color. The this is one of those things that's so good. It's almost hard to talk about because there's like nothing that's standing out more than everything else. If that makes sense. Yeah. There's like you can see some of the directional lighting, some of the slight rawness of the skin to reflect the cold of the ice. But again, it's so well blended together. You don't even really have something to latch onto. As a, a plebeian of bang average painter, you know, yeah. there's nothing to grasp onto that I can talk about with confidence without showing my ass and proving that I don't know anything about high level painting. And um, we we don't actually show our ass on this podcast. Um, no, that's, that's below the, the belt. Yeah, that's the the Patreon only. Yeah, that's uh, the after hours podcast. Um, so moving on to the winning lists, which hopefully we're more qualified to talk about, would, or at least two of us are. So. Sorry, Dave, you suck. Um, third place uh, is a Misty Mountains Lothlorien Numenor alliance uh -huh. from Ted Cantu. Um, now, I'd say this isn't actually too different from what we'd see normally. Not too different, at least. Uh, the leader is Gwahir. Um, he's got Galadriel with eight Galathrim warriors with shield, four guard of the Galathrim court, a Wood Elf Sentinel and two Wood Elf Warriors with Wood Elf Spear, uh, noting only a single bow in that section of the list. Um, mm -hmm. Isildur with Horse and the Ring, no shield. Um, six Warriors of Numenor with shield, four Warriors of Numenor with Spear and Shield, four Warriors of Numenor with Spear and Bow, and one Warrior of Numenor with Spear, Bow and Banner. Interesting that he chose to put his bow on the banner. Yeah, I was noting I would have put a shield, but yeah, just swap yeah. the shield for one of the four yeah. spear shield. Also, yeah, you mentioned that he's got four but bo five bows in his Numenor half maxed out, and he's only got one in his Galadrim half. But I guess he wants his Galadrim warriors at D six at the front, um, and the Wood Elves are there to pump the numbers slightly. Uh, this is already extremely bare bones numbers. Like, yes. I like Guahir plus the Sidor plus the Ring, Galadriel to tie the whole thing together. It's a nice combo. I, I my biggest issue with it is it has no march, um. Which you don't you don't need much, but it doesn't have a huge amount of killing power. I think this the fact that this podium's without March tells you that the scenarios or the meta just does, doesn't favor it. In fact, speaking of March meta, I mentioned this to Stephen earlier when we first arrived. Only two of the top eight lists had March in at all. Yeah, it seems I mean, to me like that's not a priority for Americans. Rem and remind I... me, this was veto, so to a certain uh, yeah, extent, but... if the scenario is awful. You could just change it to a different one in the pool. The thing is, for, for my money, March is the best best heroic in the game, or at least it's the, the heroic that gives you the most additional options. Like I just I don't... think heroic move probably. I completely but... I completely disagree with March. In Pe some armies, in some armies, it's completely essential. It must always be considered, 
but not every army needs a march. I don't think every army needs needs a march, but I think I would always take march, always, barring extreme circumstances. Like I think it's just that good. Gives me so many options. So yeah, it's the order that they played in, they played the scenario the objective scenario first, then they played killing scenarios, then object scenarios, then as unique scenarios, then maneuvering scenarios, then Maelstrom is the last one. Um, I would imagine there was a lot of hold grounds being played on the final round. Mm. Um yeah, I don't know. I I like the list. I think it would be probably a bit too easy to deal with for something with two rates, for example. But um clearly he's done well with it. He went five and one and got a good number of big wins. I didn't see a lot of wrath lists. There was an Angmar list that came through. sixth. Um, yeah, from my knowledge of the American meta previously, I don't think magic has ever been anywhere near as prevalent. Yeah, I mean, the highest finishing Mordor player was a Mordor, Mordor Serpent Horde player in nineteenth, uh, I think it was. They were playing all cavalry, so it was it was a Witch King with Morgul Knights, and then Suladan and the Betrayer and Fell Beast, and then a ton of Raiders and Serpent Riders, which is novel and exciting and fantastic and probably really cool to look at, but like it's not particularly meta from our understanding of it when you say Sulodan and betrayer on fell beast uh, so which Sil- one's the big spoon and which one's the little spoon <laughs> it's like uh you know you've seen titanic right yeah in that in that context the betrayer is rose and Sulodan is because Jack. she betrays him by not giving him space on the door yeah yeah, yeah no I it's, it's i was mostly because the betrayer is wearing a dress that was where oh, i was okay. going with that right um, fair enough a robe, I should say, to be fair. If all um, one no, dresses. But yeah, that's definitely not a uh, not a what we'd consider a mord or serpent horde list over here. So yeah, the fact that there's like very little in the way of magic other than a couple of Galadriels pretty is pretty telling. Like a double like I said, two casters, two ring wraiths would probably give this a lot of problems, especially when yeah. it only has thirty three models. But what does the list do well? It it's got Guahi, who's obviously got the ring. an exceptional tool. It's got like the ring, which is an exceptional tool, and it's got you know relatively cheap magic and Galadriel. So, it's got fight six. Yeah, fight six yeah. and strike four. I mean, this is a great battle line. It's similar to something that um Evan Iverson used at a thousand, where he used Guahe, Galadriel, Elendil, yes, and I think a captain, and that Numenor captain on horse. Similar logic. I mean, you can see that you can see the logic. You can you can put Guahe as your leader. He's pretty tanky, pretty dangerous. Great at contest. Fairly easy to keep safe, especially if you give him. I mean, this won't have it because it's pretty bare bones, but if you have the extra 25 points, you can give him the bird bath where you buy the mirror of Galadriel, or give it to Gua here. Yeah. He's a it's a heavy object, but he can carry it because he's a monster. And then every turn he can get all his fate back without any without any problems. Yes, flash killing a uh, three fate, three wound D eight monster is fight eight as well. Yes. It's tough. You have to do a yeah. lot. You have to do six wounds, which is easier said than done. It's easy if you're not... an enchanted blades uh, Gilgalad as uh james goble will attest to Shaft yeah well i mean famous. the other thing that's good against it is the ring um yeah. which this this also has and isildur the main cool thing about isildur is he basically takes the ring off everybody except for sauron yeah um so they're not going to use it against you yeah i think it's good good yeah. list um has its weaknesses i can see a way to beat it but clearly he's done well with it he's got a lot of big wins mm-hmm. uh he only came behind the guy in second on vp diff they both had five big wins is this small loss? Is this sealed or being underused here? Because we, you mean we here saw, in the UK saw, or in yeah, this list? In in the UK, because in well, Ardic- in Articon, he also finished third as well. Again, from a foreign team. Yeah, well, I mean, Isildur is suddenly, as of the last couple of podcasts, I feel like showing up a little more. We've seen, I've certainly seen a little more what you might call last alliance with the Sildor in the ring since the beginning of the year. Um, I don't know if there is a causation, perhaps other podcasts are advocating for a pseudo, but the thing is a pseudo for 130 points with the ring is a great tool. Um, I know if you take a pseudo, you can throw in at 800, you can run a pseudo, Glorfindel, Numenor Captain and Kurdan and get 36 models, good shooting. And that's a fantastic list. I know Jakob used exactly that list to the finale and came second. Yeah, and if, and if you're talking about double wraith, he gets resistant to magic. So he does, although his ring does not work if he's got double wraith. True, but he's still what strength five, 
He's strained uh, five, five six, uh, and he has so... a hand and a half sword if he needs to go to the end. Yeah, mm-hmm. the fight six is amazing. I, I think his sword was great. Um, I think that when they bumped him up from two wounds, two attacks to three wounds, three attacks, it was a big upgrade. And he's got two well resistant to magic. He's not a chump. Yeah. So shall we move on to the second yeah, place on. list? Uh, second place list was an Azog's Legion, Azog's Hunters Alliance um, from Richard Lynn, who is uh, one of the hosts of the Into the West podcast. Um, so shout out you guys and shout out Richard. Well done. Um, now he had Bolg on a fell wog. Uh, Bolg! Um, <laughs> with six good and bad orc warriors with spear and shield, three good and bad orc warriors with shield, one with spear, shield, and banner, two yeah. Gundabad berserkers, now three war bats, which I'm sure we'll discuss in a moment, um, a goblin mercenary captain with five goblin mercenaries, Fimble the hunter on wog with four hunter orcs, four hunter orcs with bow and a fell wog. And Nazog on Felwag with four hunter orcs and five hunter orcs with orc bow. Good list. Yeah, solid Strong. list, solid numbers. It's very choppy. Um, I am staring at those three war bats, thinking there's I like a, would use two. There's like a lot of war bats to me. Yeah, and then but... you can get two more hunter orcs and well, maybe he's a, he's also not max his bow limit as well. So yeah. if you so for my money, I'd take two war bats. Uh, no, he, he has a more... bow limit. No, he hasn't. It's fifty percent. He could have. Uh... Has he? Wait, am I counting that wrong? Eighteen. He's got nine. Oh yeah, that's right. If he had another yeah. model, he could have an extra one. Yeah. Yeah. I was for some reason I was reading that as one of the warbands having ten in it. Now, um, are Fimble and Nars the correct choice over Yazdeg? I think so for this yes, list. Yeah. Bold brings the march. You yeah. need this. Fimble is obvious, obviously great. And I think yeah. Nazar just gives you tech. Like, you don't need another killer. You've got Fimble, you've got Bog. Um, I think Nazar makes sense. It gives you a little something for dealing with horses. It gives you a little something, you know, a might caddy that you don't have to com- uh, commit to throwing in if you need to protect someone in Fog of War, for example. Yeah. He's, he's good got the into, he's, captain. He's good shooting into combat as well. So, yeah. if there's like an extra threat on Bog, then it's just. He took out my out. Boromir's horse in yeah. game six on Sunday through two yeah. in the ways. Um, yeah. so. Bolg is also amusingly killy to a slightly hilarious degree. Yeah. Basically, the only thing that makes him worse than Azog is, well, I mean, obviously, the, the Warg is a lot worse, but then a Felwarg, I was saying this on the weekend, a Felwarg is still just the best mount in the game that exactly isn't a good. special, unique yeah. mount. Like, Wargs are already great because of the dismount ability and potential for cheekiness on, on scenario technique and also being able to charge with that line of sight. And this one also has the benefit of having a stupid base, which means he can reliably charge three models, which pretty much no other models can do. Like anything yeah. that has a circular base, charging three models reliably is very difficult to do, whereas Bolg can just charge into two and then turn and crash into another one as well. Yeah, yeah. Calling people out on that extra bulk move, though, there's it's a horrible base to have to play against. Yeah, and... yeah, you have to be very careful to because no part of your base is allowed mm. to move more than ten inches, and people forget or abuse it, uh, depending on. Yeah, it's not like old school forty k where you'd start with all your tanks facing sideways so that you could get that pivot. That sweet, the fish sweet of pivot. fury, um, yeah. I believe the old devil fish tactic was referred to. Yeah. Um, I I was... really love bulk. I think he's. He's really, really cool. He does the bits that I like, which is big, smashy hero. Well, um, he's, Master he's of Battle like, on Fight 7 is disgusting. Yeah. He's kind of like evil Gilgalad in a way, in the sense yeah. that his problems are the same problems, which is he yeah. gets his wog chumped quite easily by, by magic or shooting or Legolas or whatever. He gets, you know, he's very, very killy and he has a higher than average fight value. But then ultimately, when he's out of will, he still dribbles on himself when magic comes to town. Yeah. I he think... does. He the other was, benef- oh, go yeah, on. sorry. No, no. He was used a lot at the start of the new edition yeah. over here. And then I think he's been one of the casualties of like the, the cheap ring wraith list. Yeah. Well, magic is back, baby. One other benefit of uh, wag mounts is that yeah. if you get withered multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to use the plus one to wound thing, you still need to have yeah. the, the, the... But I mean, that's the other thing. He's burly two-handed with a pick as well. So... You know, Azog wounds heroes on a three, but as I was pointing out to you in the car, most of the time, Bolg can wound them on fours, if not better. I mean, yeah. he's 
he can go up to strength six with plus one. Like he's doing fine. He's not exactly struggling to kill even the toughest heroes. Even stuff like Thraw, he could pretty comfortably smash. Yeah. You know? He also has um does he have ancient enemies? He Azul has doesn't... ancient enemies, yeah. yeah. Um and he has the bringer of death rule, which just yeah. creates chaos. You know, Harbinger of Evil after two kills is actually low key really good. Yeah. Um and then, you know, from there it gets better and better. Yeah. He's he's no, the sorry, reason it's not hard, hard, five kills for Harbinger. He's the reason I stopped playing King Elisar. Yeah, because Bolg is just like, hey bitch. <laughs> it just makes you feel sad about the game and that, you know, King Elisar, our hero's champion, just can't yeah. compete with this orc. <laughs> well that's, <laughs> that's logic, isn't it? It's like as I've got Bolg, you're like, oh fight 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 seven? What? Yeah, I, I'm better than we, are, we would not be the first people to say why on earth is this guy fight seven? Who bloody he is, is brutal like... and strong, but Legolas beats him in combat. He kills him. Legolas isn't Megalas anymore. Legolas should be fight eight. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Change fight value to a to a naught to one hundred scale. Simple. Simple. Done. But anyway, then he's still I, I, then he's still seventy and Aragon sixty. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, <laughs> that's true. So I like this, this the, a lot. The warbats. Do we think okay. dropping one warbat to have two, and then adding this, just a couple more numbers? This has a lot. This has a lot of uh, fast movers. Like, I would say it has fast movers in excess. Like, yeah. I like the berserkers. Um, I think they're under. They're slightly underutilized, possibly. A move in eight, two attack, strength four, ability to piercing strike is nice. Courage, courage six, six, courage yeah. six. They're they're less than Urukai berserkers, but they're faster moving. I like those. I think three warbats is also great, but in this specific list, I think forty two point forty two models is maybe just a teeny bit like dear. Yeah, they also need to be split across warbands in this particular list. The problem is it they can't be. Because um, the Warbats are committed to the Gundabad um, yeah. part of it. Oh, and they can't sure. the mercenary warband without yeah. stopping them from being able to deep strike. If they even can anymore, I can't remember. You have um, 18 models that actively want to be in the front line and are all D4. Um, yeah. So f- for me, I don't mind having a couple of little Gundabads without spears. But I, I think like if it was me, I'd drop a bat, try and get two more Hunters. Mm. Maybe another yeah. Felwag, and then throw. Make sure you got max bows, and throw a couple of extra spears on those shields. But I think this is a really solid list. Like this would yeah. do well anytime you played it. I think this would do well over here as well. Beyond yeah. Bold getting over magic, I think the, the other thing is crossbows would blow this thing to pieces. Oh yes, of course. Unfortunately, yeah. but yeah, we don't talk. You about would, much. as you said earlier, get your dick blown off on the way. Into you could. You wouldn't necessarily, yeah. but you definitely could. Yeah. You could, of course. I mean, there is the if you don't need them for the scenario play, the well, that's the mercenary bats. captain and the bats. Yeah, you can. You just charge them in and you be like, charge them right, in, you especially me while you while you run up behind. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I did this. Um, I did this. I uh, used uh, this is quite a common tactic for me. If I'm trying to do a heroic combat in front of a goblin gunline in AOL, I'll be like, right, I will pop out a couple of broodlings, charge just four of them, so that that's just less shots and less likely to accidentally lose the well allow you to shoot out my the target of my big pile up heroic combat you know even with the shadow lord in range you do have to be careful of that sort of thing yeah while it, they can it is shoot helpful through their to combat, get less shots um yeah while, while they can shoot past their own combats the guys who've been charged by the brood lane can't shoot so yeah. that's why I, I say less or, or fewer shots maybe um I, I'm going to keep saying less, and you can keep correcting me if you want, but I will I know. hate it We, we chatted th- about this earlier. Um, I, I'm going to apologise to no one. Um, so moving on to Move the on. first place list was uh, Alicia Aminov. Now, I'm really sorry if I butchered mm-hmm. your name. Alicia. Um, uh, in, I, I assume it's Alicia or Alicia Aminov. Sorry, sir. Um, now, this is a Halls of Thranduil Survivors of Lake Town Combined Alliance. We saw something um, similar to this earlier. Did, uh, yeah, I was going to say, we saw this okay. at Bubbles, which was quite nice. This list really does tickle my pickle, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's, um, it's 42 models with 14 bows and 8 might. It, the leader is Thranduil, King of the Woodland Realm, with his armor, his fancy hat, and his additional sword. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got 5 Mirkwood Elves with shield, 4 with elf bow, 1 elf with banner and glaive, two palace guard with spear, two palace guard with spear and shield, 
one Merkwood cab with shield and a sentinel. And then he's got Legolas uh, on horse with five elves with shield, four with elf bow, three with shield and elf glaive, one Merkwood elf with bow and glaive, and another cab with shield. And then to round it off, he's got a Lake Town militia captain with three Lake Town militia with bow, two with shield, and four with spear. I dig it. I've said this before, but yeah. I think the Lake Town militia captain sprinkling into the Thrand- Halls of Thranduil is really the, the secret source that makes it all take over. Because putting March in the list and yeah, additional literally. numbers. Mo- March for 40 points. points. Yeah. Even even if you didn't take any of the Lake Town, which I still would, because at this level you're maxing out Legolas and Thranduil's war bands anyway. You know, the, the army bonus for this is actually really good. Plus one to wound is very, very strong. Thranduil went on foot. Like I still like the horse on Thranduil, but I understand why you cut the points because it's just it's hard to get the numbers. Legolas yeah. provides a lot of control. Uh, Thranduil, he's got a good shooting. Thranduil is extremely killy. He's one of the only infantry heroes that is comparably killy and dangerous to our cavalry heroes. You know, him and Shagrat are like best friends for life kind of vibes. Um, Yeah, it's it's tough. I like this list a lot. I'm not surprised it won. Yeah. What I would yeah. say is, I think this is the kind of list that thrives in a meta where you're not very likely to rock up to a table and see 15 crossbows put down. Or two ring wraiths. Yeah, although to be fair, I think the crossbows scare this list more. Crossbows in yeah. a bomb, you're like, what the hell are you going to do against it? Other than yeah. hope that Legless can actually shoot a berserker. But, unlike but the we know he can't. We know he can't, yeah. I mean, he does shoot him, just doesn't kill him. Yeah. Yeah, so I really like the list. Um, I think this is the kind of thing that I would run if I wasn't so scared of shooting and so scared of magic because I really like Legolas and Thrandor as pieces. I think they're really fun to play with. Thrandor was one of my favourite models back in the day. You can still shoot around this, though. Legolas is that sort of model that if you know what you're doing, you can outshoot an entire army, especially against crossbows. At least to the point yeah. where your opponent is going to have to now change what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, so, he's got a lot of... It does have a lot yeah. of bows. And when you've got Legolas, if you want to shoot three times, he's very tough. My 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 worry is, again, it's basically just crossbows. If you think, like, Rasku in 13 or 14 crossbows is what you get at 750, if he heroic shoots and rolls well, you could be... It doesn't, it doesn't an uphill, matter. ...an uphill battle very, very quickly. I think it does matter. You just... Unless if, you roll if you give, way if better. You, if you give Legolas a cloak and dismount him, you can go out and shoot anything you want. True. But, like, that is a very specific game that your opponent has to sort of opt into. I, it's not it's not a be all and end all. Like I'm not saying it's gonna get bent over by by shooting every time. Obviously it isn't, you know. But um I think the biggest problem that's with this the thing that puts me off. I think the biggest problem is just the cost of building it, right? Because it's all the new Hobbit models. Well, new. They're not that new. Twenty fifteen, Com- I think comparatively. <laughs> yeah, well newer than most of the models, that's true. I'm just having a quick look at what he played against. Um Azog's Legion uh, was AT. Army of Thrall and Rivendell. Interesting. Azog's Legion again. Numenor, Rivendell twice. And then he played the, the Misty Mountains list that we saw that came third. Yeah. Out of interest, do you prefer Legolas and Thranduil as opposed to putting in Thorin? Because that's what we used to see quite a lot. Well, the, there was yeah, 750, actually, this list. You used to be able to run Thranduil, Thorin with full war bands, and then you could run a Lake Town Captain and Al- Alfred. Mm. But they changed it so you can't run Alfred without having the Master or Bard because that was a really good combo. Because you'd be like, cool, here's my Mike Caddy Captain with five might, and I've got two big Chads running around, smashing everything. And if you fancy that, you could also do Bard and Legolas if you wanted to be a real shooty boy. Um. No, I, I think now Legolas makes a lot more sense than Thorin. Um, because if you took Thorin instead, you well, I mean, you could get. I like the dwarves. To be fair, yeah. mm. I think this list probably benefits more from having the shooting. Personally, I think if anything, I'd be more likely to drop Thrand. I mean, I used to run at eight hundred last year. I was running for, um Legolas, Thorin, and. Gandalf plus a militia captain. So, but out of interest, yeah. what does this list benefit from from veto, if anything? 
Because this would do well without veto, right? Um, I mean, I think any list that lack, has a particular weakness, like this one is a weak to shooting, uh, benefits from potentially weak to shooting, I should say. It isn't actually necessarily weak to shooting that isn't crossbow. Benefits from being able to say, okay, we're not going to play to the death. We're going to start on the middle line and play contest or whatever, you know? Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say it strongly benefits. This isn't a list that's super skew. To be honest, I think this is probably the most. This one and the one that came second are the most all comers list that came in the top eight by my assessment. Well, that that's why it's interesting because it was a it was a veto tournament, but yeah. yet we've still got two armies that don't aren't really bothered by it. That's yeah, I thing. mean, winning retrieval five nil. I guess that was probably a leader in a break. Interesting. Huh. I don't know. I wouldn't say this. Yeah, I wouldn't say this benefits massively from 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 veto. Anyway. We've chatted about the lists. Let's get on to the most important part of the podcast. The comments. Cubbits. The cupboards. The bits where we get to stroke oh, our goodness. egos. Egos. Um, once again, uh, we haven't done individual animations for each of the comments because uh, we're actually getting quite a view now, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, please, and you know, the intern's not here. But... Any questions or, uh, you know, any comments, anything rude you want to say about us, we'll definitely read it out. Um, so... Firstly, that original orc, shout out again. Lovely Instagram page. Go check out his painting. Uh, important British question. What's your go-to Tesco meal deal oh, selection? Oh. What a great question. This is a really good question. Yeah. Um, at the moment, Sainsbury's do a really nice uh, vegan hoisin duck wrap. Now, I'm not a vegan or even a vegetarian, but it's really nice. He um, didn't say Sainsbury's meal deal, Stephen. Oh, he said Tesco's. Well, yes. then it's going to have to be uh, tuna mayo sandwich uh, tuna mayo sweet corn preferably uh with either cheese and onion crisps or uh smoky bacon and then uh either an orange juice or a fanta lemon they do the big big salt and vinegar big hoops yes like the hula hoops but yeah the salt and vinegar are quite rare you see a lot of a lot the of the original beef. flavor and then occasionally barbecue beef but salt mm. and vinegar they go hard like those so if they've got those i'll get them and then they the subs they do the, I like the both the 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 deli one is really nice. The cheese and ham one and the chicken and uh, chicken bacon one, peppered chicken, those are good. And then yeah, Dr Pepper, probably a drink if I'm not drinking energy drinks. Yeah, for me it's the same every time. It's the uh, the sun dried pasta one with the oh, cheese, yeah. the That's the mon- the monster mango, and then Chris is maybe. Chris's main is the flexible one, but probably prawn cocktail. Mm, I think prawn yeah. cocktail is solid. Prawn You're talking Walker's like prawn my... cocktail? Yeah, Walker's I, I prawn cocktail. So. I don't like or the, the, um... or the, the spicy ones, the Max ones, if they have mm, them. Yeah. But those paprika are good, the paprika ones. Yeah. Yeah. Paprika okay. crisps are always brilliant. Um, If you know I'm going to a tournament and you bring me paprika crisps, uh, I'll be your friend for life. No You'll matter just what. concede the game and hug you. Yeah. Yeah. I will I will like to say though that chocolate is definitely my go-to over crisps and my last two tournaments that I've done well in people have given me chocolate on a okay, promise so... that I do well so therefore chocolate Don't is the go-to. give Jasmine chocolate. Is Absolutely the... not. It's the yeah. it's the way to get me playing the game. For everyone <laughs> for the benefit of everyone uh let's not give Jasmine chocolate. Let it be. Cuz some of us want to win. Um Fat Hobbit Gaming 5292 Liam Smith Ooh. shout out. What else could that be? <laughs> almost upset that Jordan wasn't playing the Watcher last weekend. It's very nice to see everyone else make up for the lack of Watcher. <laughs> well done, Elliot, on taking away most sporting. Proves you can be a nice guy and get something, even if it's not a podium finish. Um, Elliot doesn't actually know what podium finish means. Um, so It's when you take your podium and you polish it to a mirror shine. Yes. I think, uh, I think that's what that refers to. Jordan is on a uh, Farharad uh, train this year, um, and it might be yeah. his new thing. He uh, likes blowpipes, is the hope- thing. Hopefully, uh, I never have to play against his watch ever again because he was devilish with that model. We uh, we had a big old conversation where he was like trying to get me to look at his lists and every single one of them, I was like, this would probably be a lot better if you did this, this and this. He's like, no, no, no. But the point is to get as many blowpipes as possible. And I was like, okay, well, I'll try and shut off the part of my brain that is telling me what I think is really, really good. And I'll just... Turn off logic switch. Yeah, turn off logic, increase blowpipes. Yeah. And get well, rid of banners. If he, if he wants a watcher list, then uh, tell him to get in touch with me because I have a very, very good one. I'm just waiting for a thousand point tournament. Well, 
I, f- I don't think I think Jordan's. He doesn't pretty, need uh, help with watcher list. I was going to say watcher list is the one thing he definitely doesn't need help on. Yeah. No, no, so, but this is this is like if you enjoy the watcher, this is like next level enjoyment for you as a player, not your it, opponent. Is it Spider Queen Watcher Witch King? Because... It, it is. It is not. It's more devilish than that. Okay. How many bombs um, do you have? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um. I'm... OG Tim. Uh, uh, OG Tim. Tumo, Tomo. OG Tomo. Uh, it says, imagine not having Kylie as Lola Bunny. Um, it's funny. I'm in agreement with you. The comments on this, uh, so I don't know, I assume you already know this, but Kylie has not ever been a large presence in the GBHL. She has podiumed multiple times, though, which is fairly impressive for someone who lives a minor 10-hour flight away. Um, but yeah, that that is a pretty pretty clear issue with the gbhl thing however i was interested to see we had a lot of comments about carly on this which makes me think we've picked up some australian viewership which is exciting i've been wanting yeah, to so good day breach that market yeah, yeah. oh no we've uh, lost them oh, oh we've lost them they're all gone <laughs> um yeah as previously stated uh, it was just for british players um i think kylie does make a great load of bunny of course of course yeah well, i mean who wouldn't uh Jax the 92 says and i thought this was great what do you think the most underrated army is that's actually competitive? And why is it Thranduil's Halls with Thran Daddy? Well, it did just win Adepticon, yeah, which is I obviously mean, different meta, but... I, I mean, I think Thranduil's Halls uh, is yeah. a definitely a, it's a great shout. And because you've said it, I sort of feel obliged to not say it now. Um, yeah. My sort of swerve pick is I think fiefdoms are decent. I think probably not pure fiefdoms, but I think fiefdoms with some sprinkling Rohan or sprinkling Minas Tirith actually is pretty solid. Like they actually have some really good rules, um, and if you if you min max them correctly, I think fiefdoms are a really solid basis. They're kind of like an arm. They're kind of like a legendary. The way their army plays is kind of like a legendary legion. Um, the biggest problem I have with it, you know, I mentioned this earlier, is it doesn't have march on any good models. So you have to basically that's why Rohan and Minas Tirith come in so handy because they bring march in abundance. I like fiefdoms. They're yeah, good. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I never walk up to a table with Fiefdom and think I'm about to have a bad or sad game. So, uh, I, think, yeah. I think basic Isengard is very underrated. I don't think it's underrated anymore. Yeah, <laughs> if you'd said that two months ago, you would have been you right. Might have been, you might have been, <laughs> you might have got some props. But yeah, ever since the sort of December, um, Isengard is all over the map right now. Uh, you haven't been watching our episodes, Jasmine. That's yeah, why I keep on, Jasmine. blathering on about crossbows. Fake fan. Uh, and telling Robert... everyone to take blinding light. <laughs> Robert Stevens, 3847, says, I love the Dream Team idea. It will be very interesting to see what points level this matches could have been and whether that might affect the pickings. Over what hmm. points and very brief, what army are you taking? Um, I think we'd have to go somewhere between 650 to 800 points. 800 is the standard for team formats. Yeah. Everyone I've played has been 800. I think that gives you the large, probably the, the broadest variety of available armies. Yeah. and styles i think that's a good choice i think 800 is a great choice for that reason what army am i taking um whatever my team tells me to take um to be perfectly honest um, so yeah, elves and blinding light uh or bando or dragon emperor or you know whatever he said being told to take dragon emperor to being Belgium told to take dragon emperor to the nation's cup yeah yeah um, that's what i thought or smalk uh, or smalk <laughs> yeah make or your smalk. life easier smalk of the witch king easy yeah. Um, cool. Mark O'Brien at 2481 says if we can double the 35 likes can we get the interns karaoke for Carrie Underwood personal karaoke favourite for me too um, I can't make promises on behalf of him but we'll try and get him to do it uh, Dave and I are now contractually obliged to do Lovers and Open Door Yeah. Um, so I've yeah been learning, we, been we've been practising this compliment yeah. um, next uh, Dave T Two three two five. I've noticed there's a lots of uh, comments of people with yeah. four numbers after their name. I think it's like the hashtag Discord thing. Um, I like for the frozen video. Uh, the frozen video last week was because I was very ill and kept having to blow my nose, so I was saving you all from seeing that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Scatter the winds three one two six says me too. Let's see if we can fund a RAM update again. If you want to pay me money, please do. I was ill. So, um, yeah, pay Stephen some money. Yeah, he needs it. Yeah, uh, we'll buy some new mics if you do that. 
Um, David Jackson, 39, says, how would this dream team shape up against an Aussie team? Um, well, it's difficult because they're all in prison, I assume. So Wow, there you go. Uh, could you contain Losing Kylie, the, the Maradona of MESBG? Really? Now, I'm not sure if that's saying that she likes cocaine and she cheats, or <laughs> if she was sent by God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean... So I was joking about this uh, after this. I saw this comment and I said, uh, you know, Maradona, not a basketball player, but he did very famously <laughs> saw a goal with his hand, which, yeah. you know, impressive. Um, so I think uh, I think this team would do fantastically into basically any international team. Uh, obviously, our Polish friends do not think that we'd beat them, but I'd honestly be disappointed if they did think that um, because, of course. If you don't uh, back yourself, then what's the yeah. point? Yeah. Exactly. What's the point? Uh, I think we I think we give any Aussie, Aussie team a very, very good game. Um, yeah. I, I would like to point out that the last time Kylie played a member on this team, it was Ali and he beat her. So, you know, just saying it's a thing that could happen despite being Maradona of SPG, any SPG. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in short, we think the Dream Team would shape up against an Aussie team very well. Um, I've seen I've seen the army list that some people take in Australia and I'm like hmm yes that is something who, 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 is, Bombardil, aren't you? who is managing the England team because that's where England have gone wrong in the past uh, me Ben sure. Goran Eriksson of course so we're going to play 4-4-2 yeah. you've, got a, you've got a lot Gerard of big Gerard and names. Lampard in midfield it's I, going to I, work I, this I've time. got a lot of personalities to manage and I will be managing the team with an iron fist it was, uh, yeah, having been to some ETCs in the past, there are some players there that you're going to have to have a very good uh, the Mavericks. relationship. Mavericks, yes. Jasmine. Yeah, that's fine. I can handle those personalities because if you don't like it, then get the fuck off the team. You handle the Any Heroics team. I do. I, I always <laughs> want to point out I pick the team. Just, just want to say that. Yeah, that's you pick team. the team, but pick I'm the, the manager. Um, Gollum's Gamers says, does this mean there's an Any Heroics <laughs> basketball team on the horizon? Um, um, that, that... Given how awful uh, some people were at walking up the hill uh, from Bath on the weekend, I'm not entirely sure we'll be so, able to do that without cardiac arrest. I, I just want to point out that that collapsed comment is me saying um, that half of the people on that podcast hadn't even seen Space Jam, let alone played basketball. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. I, this is presumably Elliot because he's a big basketball fan. But yeah. I would consent, now that my knee is a little better, I would consent to getting embarrassed by him in a one on one at some point. I like You're taller basketball. than him, though. So you probably I am quite him. a lot taller than him, yeah. But I also don't know how to play basketball. Right. Don't tell him. Um, Carson Howard, 9489, uh, says, I Boy. certainly do have a lot to paint, and I've been teaching a few of my co workers at the PD to play on our days off. Um, we recently started a battle companies campaign. I'm playing Moria, and the other three are playing Azog's Legion, Halls of Thranduil, and Mordor. So I still get to enjoy playing the game. Uh, on a side note, the Halls of Thranduil player is probably going to accelerate really quickly in comparison to the Moria player. But um, yeah, no, oh, look at this guy is... having having played battle companies before. It's beautiful. Battle companies is maybe the best way to play the game, in my mm, opinion. In fantasy... a in a in a no, fun no. specific setting. fantasy fellowship, just okay, yeah. outdoes it. But yeah. they're both very, very good. You should watch our Fantasy Fellowship series, Jasmine. Um, I do enjoy oh, listening to many podcasts for MESBG, but none more than any heroics. Now, that really warms my heart because there's Look a lot it. of good content out there. Um, you love to see it. I, I do love Conquest Creations, Gollum's Gamers, Lost Alliance of Noobs and Men, Into the West, Battle Camper, Fox Gaming, just all you creators. Yeah, I mean, every name you've just listed there, I, I watch their stuff as well. So I'm a fan of this too. Um, I think I really just globbed on to any heroics after you guys did a hundred point free for all video. Yes, that was that was definitely a video we did. Yeah, um, I really enjoy yours content and look forward to seeing it all the time. Well, hopefully we'll be making a bit more. Um, we keep saying we're going to put up reps up. I think we have one coming on Friday. Um, depending on how the intern gets on with it, as I say, he's on holiday. So um. Yeah, thank you very much for the nice words, Carson. That's that's pretty nice to hear. Super. Um, and that is it for the comments. Mm. Um, I know it's 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 only seventeen. Last year, <laughs> last year, last year there were eighteen. 
Um, yeah. Again, if you're thinking about leaving a comment, you know, just write something random. Um, bonus points if you write the exact words, something random. Yes. Bonus points if you write the words. Pedantry exa- is encouraged around random. here, hence why Stephen keeps saying the word fewer at me when I say less. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you everyone for coming on to listen. Thank you for comment, liking, sharing, subscribing. Uh, remember to support your Hobbit hobby. Uh, remember to uh, go check out Firestorm Games in the link below and uh, buy some stuff from there if you if stay you humble. Need hobby supplies. Stay chittery. Stay humble and stay chittery. And uh, Jasmine, have you got anything to shout out? Uh, I have nothing, but other than thank you for having me. Oh, you're very you're more than welcome. Yeah, we'll have to get the other seven members of the Seven City Crusaders on uh, some Or oh. we could have a big team event, Any Heroics versus Seven City. Now, see, I don't know how an Any Heroics team could possibly overcome a Seven City team at a team event. That doesn't yeah. sound possible. Or, you me. know, maybe doing it twice, you know. Tee hee. Having, having, a, having a full nine on nine. That would be cool, to be fair. Yeah. I think Any Heroics cool. should probably lose that, though. Well, you Mostly think because so, I'm not but... on the team. But you know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. Chitter chitter. Chitter chitter.